Peggy Edelman's Sky Jumper. This is the book, first book in the Sky Jumper series. 272 pages, 38 chapters. Really a mix of Lord of the Rings meets Hatchet. So, you know, survivalist, but also a young adult uh, fantasy adventure where they travel uh, across a long distance and over a mountain. So, post-apocalyptic young adult fiction. Female author, female lead, great book. Premise is World War III happened. This is the aftermath. And so, uh, in an attempt to uh, go beyond nuclear weapons, they created green bombs, which didn't affect the planet, but were able to wipe out humans. And so, it was this after effects that shaped the world, changed everything, and changed the property of metals. So magnets no longer work, so then that invalidates a large swath of technology. So it kind of brought everyone back uh, technology-wise and changed the way they do things. So. They live in this town in a valley um, called White Rock, surrounded by, uh, above them, is the bomb's breath. Uh, so it's the aftermath, uh, the after effects, and it uh, makes <laughs> the air a little, you know, you can't breathe in it, but it also affects the way things pass through it. So snow and even people uh, passing through it will feel heavier and stuff like that. So very interesting concept, great take. This. It, it just was so unique and creative. It just, the pages just melted. I, I mean, I just flew through this book. It was great. So, um, again, the inventions, right? They're trying to get, uh, you know, up their technology. They don't have the magnets and, you know, they talk about cell phones and telephones and all that stuff. And, you know, they don't have any of that. So, um, their town, uh, there's like this master inventor and everybody looks up to him and they have this festival every year where everybody above the age of four presents an invention. So that's kind of cool. I really like that. And it's really not an expectation. It's a requirement. So it's, it's required that everyone do this. Um, and they have, uh, you know, a kid's category and an adult's category. The main character is somewhere between 11 and 14, um, you know, and has four friends. They are in a sticky situation, but they love to sky jump through the bomb's breath. They're able to figure out that if you hold your breath, um, you don't, uh, it, it doesn't affect you. And so, you know, people in the town, when the town was founded, they're, you know, they have all kinds of relatives who passed away by, you know, going into the bomb's breath. So everybody's really afraid of it. And these four friends just, you know, sky jump through it for fun, you know, before school. So... Um, another thing was uh, when talking about the inventions, they always say in the town, stick to your strengths. So I thought that was really cool. It's really easy to, to get discouraged when you focus on your weaknesses. So sticking to your strengths is really cool. It's a powerful tool. Really something I liked about this book. Um, another thing, the main character didn't give up, give up. There seemed like impossible odds, you know, strange situations and never gave up. Super cool glad that that was a part of it that there is you know effort involved in addition to just skill or you know attitude all that stuff not giving up is super important so super cool there um i like the decisions and the consequences the main character has different decisions and kind of weighs some of the choices i feel like with a lot of young adult novels it's like hey i'm just gonna i'm you know, the main character is impulsive and just does the thing. But here, you know, there was a little bit of a, hey, should I go do this? Hey, should I do that? There, there was the thinking through the thought process. I really liked that. Um, the expectations of being uh, good at inventing is very high. It's a requirement to do inventions. The main character really just couldn't find something that fit. And so those expectations and not fitting in, um, you know, made it so that it was easier to relate to this character. Um, you know, under four, being under 14 and the town council, those were both really cool plot points that helped to drive the story, um, you know, when uh, the struggles begin. Uh, the festivals, uh, that's when the inventions are showed off and the feast and all that stuff. So very cool there. Lots of fun, great atmosphere, great activity, all kinds of good stuff there. And they're trading with other towns, right? There's a close town, Browning, in which they trade clothing and food and all that stuff. So very cool there. 
really a lot to like in this book. It just flew by, was lots of fun, very creative, very unique. It, it, it didn't uh, get weighed down. You know, I didn't feel like I had to trudge through any chapters. It just was absolutely awesome. I wish I could have read this as a young adult instead of uh, like a Hatchet or a Lord of the Flies. This would have been, oh man, I've just taken it away. I, even like if you like Redwall, this would have been perfect. So great stuff there. Uh, the things I didn't like, they had all kinds of categories for job types, minor, doctor, politician, horse, uh, caretaker, trainer, guard, um, baker, doctor, <laughs> I think it said doctor twice, but there wasn't any explore, you know, adventure or explore. I feel like everyone knows somebody who likes to just be outside and explore, and I don't see why that couldn't be a job. I guess it doesn't contribute to the town directly. It would be a more indirect thing. But uh, yeah, um, other thing I didn't like, I wish there was more than two of these books. This could be an excellent series, a whole world, um, you know, that's created and just all kinds of fun that could be had. So uh, I look forward to the second one and remember to buy your books used or digital.